Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Whoever you are and wherever you are worshiping from this morning, Wherever you are in your spiritual journey is know that you're also very warmly welcome to this virtual worship service. Um, this is our third week worshiping this way, and we have been uh, changed our system up maybe four or five times this week alone. Um, you'll notice that we are not in the sanctuary this morning due to the stay at home order and um, our desire not to put the other worship leaders at risk with one another being in the same room. So what we have done is we have moved to our homes and we will switch the camera between um, me here and Deirdre is here with me running our technology. Uh, Susan is at her home and Jane is at her home and Cameron's at her home and Hadley is his home and Hadley is at her home. And so we will switch back and forth. The good news is we have much better internet in our homes than we do in the sanctuary. So um, hopefully a lot of the technical lagginess that we experienced uh, last week won't be there. Um, we've also muted you all, uh, and we will unmute you at the end of the service so that there can be some crosstalk. But uh, for the, this service, we will only have the spotlighted video um, per, uh, leader uh, being able to, to be heard by everybody. Um, but you can see a video of one another, and um, it's, good, it's good that we can know that we are worshiping with one another as one whole congregation, a good message that we are not all alone in the middle of all of this. Uh, just a couple of reminders here that um, we are continuing our three-prong effort at the church to care for one another. Hadley has been curating our helper list. Uh, this is a list that you can sign up to offer help, or you can access it if you need help. And that list is in the courier. There's a link there, but also on our website as well. We also have our guardian angels that are making intentional calls to a variety of folks around the congregation to make sure that everyone's okay. And certainly if you uh, are concerned about somebody or would like somebody to reach out to you, just reach out to Susan and I, and we will make sure uh, that we connect up with you. And certainly all of us, uh, just be mindful of those in our neighborhood, those in our community uh, who we could uh, use, a, use a call or an email, and let's uh, commit to doing that as a whole congregation. Lastly, just to mention that there is a weekly spiritual care package that Hadley, Susan, and I have been putting together. Again, there's a link uh, in the courier, but also on the website that has um, a daily devotional, some uh, family pages, as well as the weekly bulletin. And this week, I put a, a little book of comfort in there, a series of uh, scripture verses you can print out and carry around with you to comfort yourself or to comfort others. I did want to mention uh, a note from Claudia Marshall, who is our food shelf liaison. Our uh, Charlotte food shelf based at the church has been, um, uh, they've expanded their operations every week rather than twice a month, which has been straining their system. And certainly they could use some extra hands. 
and so if you have some time to help, Hadley has been helping with that um, uh, volunteer coordination. You can reach out to Hadley. But if you have donations um, that you would like to, uh, to, to make and want to know how to do that, please reach out to Claudia Marshall um, or me or Susan, and we can connect you up with Claudia, and she can walk you through how to do that. And um, the food shelf just uh, has been fantastic and really doing much to, to help our community. We're so grateful for them. Uh, I think that's all of the announcements that I have, other than just to say that we are working uh, um, on worship for Palm Sunday and Easter and, and some offerings during Holy Week as well. And so we will make those known to you in the courier going forward. Uh, next Sunday, we will worship here again, and we will have a dramatic reading of the Passion story, um, as well as the Palm uh, Sunday story and some special music as well. So stay tuned for those. So now, with that out of the way, let us just take time to settle in wherever we are, knowing that there is maybe 60 or 70 devices logged in right now uh, and that we are all together. Know that God loves you and all of us so very much. Amen.
hear now the centering word from Psalm 130, verses 5 through 6. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in God's word, I hope my soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Open my eyes, Lord, help me to see your face. Open my eyes, Lord, help me to see. Open my ears, Lord, help me to hear your voice. If you have the bulletin, I invite you to pray and sing along whenever there's a double asterisk in the bulletin or anywhere you want, actually, because I won't know. <laughs> but just participate as you're comfortable. So please pray with me as we say together. Our God in Christ, can these bones live? Our God in Christ, can these bones live? Our God in Christ, can these bones live? An urgent question for us to ponder as we worship today in hope and with trust. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad to be with you this morning, and I have Abby here with me to help me do the time for children. It's such a rainy, drizzly day, so it's perfect for a dance party. So um, I encourage you to stand up. And um, today's scripture is the story of Ezekiel in the Valley of the Dry Bones, which is a really, really cool story, and you'll get to hear it later in the service. But it's about Ezekiel working with God to call out to dry bones, and the bones come back to life. And so there's a great song about it. I know some of you know this song, so please sing along if you know it. And if you don't know the song, your challenge is to do the dance moves with Abby and myself and stand on one leg as you point to all the body parts, okay? So Abby and I are gonna sing, we're gonna dance, let's go. Ezekiel cried them dry bones, Ezekiel cried them dry bones, Ezekiel cried them dry bones, now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Now hear the word of the Lord. The toe bone connected to the foot bone. The foot bone connected to the ankle bone. The ankle bone connected to the leg bone. The leg bone connected to the knee bone. The knee bone connected to the Thigh bone, the thigh bone connected to the backbone, the backbone connected to the 
backbone, the backbone connected to the neck bone, the neck bone connected to the head bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Now hear the word of the Lord. Head bone connected to the neck bone, the neck bone connected to the backbone, the backbone connected to the hip bone, the hip bone connected to the thigh bone, the thigh bone connected to the knee bone, the knee bone connected to the leg bone, the leg bone connected to the ankle bone, the ankle bone connected to the foot bone, the foot bone connected to the Toe bone, now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Now hear the word of the Lord. Great job. Well, that was fun. And now, um, while we continue the rest of the service, I am going to encourage you to get paper, markers, crayons, whatever you'd like to draw with. And um, I'd like to ask you to draw your favorite toy that is that you like to play with in this time since we're all home a lot. So could you draw your favorite toy? Um, and uh, for the older kids, you can draw something that's helping you get through this time at home. And at the end of the service, you can show your picture to the camera on your computer or phone and we can all see your pictures. Um, I also am excited to announce that after the worship service, we're gonna have a Zoom Sunday School check-in and it will be a simple show and tell so that you can share an item from your house that you've been enjoying uh, playing with during this time. And um, so we'll just have a simple show and tell and check in with one another. Um, let's see what else. I think that's everything I have to say. I'm so glad to see you today and I'm so looking forward to seeing you after the service. If your parents aren't sure how to connect with the Sunday school Zoom after worship, just have them send me an email and we'll get you the link. Um, let's pray. Holy God, thank you for our ability to sing and dance. Thank you for all of the things that get us through these days when we feel a bit lonely and we miss our friends and we're disappointed that school won't go back into session. Lift us up, bring life to our bones, Help us to dance around and spread joy. Amen.
So this is the time in our service when we raise our prayers to God. Um, and I would, if we were normally in the sanctuary together, of course, we would be saying our prayers to one another. And that's a little complicated and hard to do in our current situation. So I just invite you, wherever you are, to sit and offer your prayers to God for just one minute. Say them out loud. Say someone's name. Say help. Say please. Say thank you. But just be with God for this one minute. So let us pray. Gracious God, Redeemer and Protector, the lake is calm, the sky is weeping, the hills purring, the red buds swelling quietly atop the maple trees. The sap will sour soon and sugaring be done for this year. This year, this year, so young and yet already worn, wise beyond its days, Forged by adversity, freshly calibrated to calamity. It takes a toll on all of us, this gearing up, this waiting, this anticipatory grief, this holding of precious breath in lungs of capacity. Dear God, in our white collar quarantine, our hearts ache for ourselves and for others. Each day we imagine all who struggle more than we. Those in the flames of addiction, who unable to score the fuel that stokes their fire, are experiencing the singeing of body and soul, or desperate scour the roads for price-gouged poison. Sustain them in this trial, that they may, like Phoenix, rise from the ashes. So, too, do we pray for those in recovery who are triggered by isolation and anxiety. Help them to breathe in the peace of your sustaining and healing love. For truth be known, we are all addicts of one kind or another whose routines have been upheaved, whose security wavers. How grateful we are to have you, for you do not waver in your steadfast love for us. Help us, sustain us as we walk in this wilderness with Jesus in this holy time. How grateful we are to have a friend in Jesus. And so we join together in the prayer which Jesus taught us, saying, Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.
So we often talk about the, the church is not a building, but a, a people. And uh, we have seen this so clearly the last few weeks. Uh, though we're not able to assemble in our beautiful buildings and have that resource available to us, um, our ministry has not diminished uh, even one whit. In fact, I think it's intensified. Our uh, ministry still meets, our cabinet st is still plotting and planning, um, our uh, worship still continues, our prayer life, our care continues, our support of our other partnership continues. And I'm so very proud of this congregation for uh, this incredible amount of work you're doing, uh, even without our buildings. So this is also uh, a time in our service where we take our offering each week. And so I just wanted to uh, acknowledge and to celebrate our shared ministry and also to make an appeal to you to continue to uh, give generously as you have done for so long. Uh, though the plate isn't being passed, you can mail in a check. You can give electronically through PayPal. On the bottom of our website, there is a, a link that you can click. Uh, you can also do a direct uh, deposit or a, a direct payment from your bank, um, or you can call Karen and have um, an electronic transfer initiated as well. So um, we thank you for your generosity. We appeal to you to continue that, that we might continue our ministry in this uh, uncertain time. Thank you. Our scripture reading this morning is from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. And one of the most uh, memorable and powerful images in all of scripture, in my opinion, the valley of dry bones. Let us listen together for God's word. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinew on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and to cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. <clears throat> so I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then God said to me, Prophesy to the breath, O mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. And then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off completely. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. May God bless this reading and hearing. Amen. So we have arrived at the fourth of a, a four-part sermon series titled, With New Eyes. 
Some of you may remember that over the past few weeks, through uh, a scripture verse and a, a painting from the Shelburne Museum each week, we have reflected on a particular question. The question the first week was, where will my help come from? The second week, our question was, how shall I carry on? Last week, our question was, what shall I do? But this week, in conversation with Ezekiel 37, and a wonderful painting that I'll ask Deirdre to put up on your monitors uh, by Eastman Johnson called Family Cares. We will ask the question that God asked Ezekiel so long ago, and which is relevant for our time to be sure. Will these bones live? And so it is through this collision, again, of word and painting and virus and Lent and technology and us that I pray what I've prayed all along that the spiritual cataracts will be removed from our eyes, will be unclouded a bit, and we'll be able to see God, ourselves, our neighbors, even our whole world with new eyes. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for this time and this place and these people. The 86 devices that are logged on let us know that we are together, strong as a community. Open our eyes, open our ears, that we might see your word and hear your word and nothing less. Amen. So Eastman Johnson uh, is a famous American painter, and he first exhibited this painting, Family Cares. And Deirdre, if you can put that up again for just a few minutes, sec seconds, I guess. Um, he first exhibited this painting in 1873. When you first look at it, it looks like a, a simple portrait, a, a, a vignette of the artist's only daughter, Ethel, as she plays with her dollies in her room. As we begin to look at the painting closer, though, we start to realize it has quite a story to tell. To piece together that story, it's helpful to know that Eastman Johnson, prior to painting this picture, he had painted a, a number of paintings where he showed slaves and free slaves in a sympathetic light. He painted during the Reconstruction period, uh, after the Civil War and during the Civil War. And unusually for the time, he painted slaves and freed slaves centrally in his canvases with strength and, and courage and with agency. So it's helpful to know that as we look in the upper right corner of the painting and we see in the foreground a chair. And if you look carefully, hanging off that chair is a disturbing image of a black doll lynched, just hanging there. This is no simple vignette, it turns out. It's hard to say exactly what Johnson is uh, trying to communicate here, but maybe we can conjecture uh, in knowing a little bit more about Eastman Johnson that he was uh, disgruntled by the failed policies as he saw them of our government in uh, reconstruction and uh, bringing this country together and integrating uh, slave, uh, freed slaves into the life uh, of, of, of the, the states and reintegrating them or integrating them for the first time. I think also there is an element here of a comment on the unredeemed sins of this nation, right? He doesn't have this doll hanging in the background. It's right in the foreground of the portrait an unredeemed sin, maybe a sin that's still unredeemed and still remains at the front of our national portrait. From this disturbing lynched doll, our eye begins to move around the room and we notice there's a number of dolls who uh, are in various states of brokenness and disrepair. And there we have a little Ethel sitting there with a dolly on her lap threading a needle. And Catherine Wood Kirchhoff, uh, associate curator of the Shelburne Museum, wonders what Ethel is doing in this picture. Is it possible that Ethel is in destruction mode and is responsible for the mess of broken dolls at her feet? Or alternatively, is she seeking to 
commend them. I want to hold that question in tension here. And I'll say that when I first began reflecting on this painting and this sermon series, I thought that I would stand before you this morning and to um, invite you to imagine yourselves as little Ethels, to imagine yourselves as those in that room and to ask these, these, these important Lenten-themed questions about your own life. Are you perhaps mending the brokenness of the world? Or are there ways that you are breaking those relationships and those people around you? Are you mending in your life or are you breaking? Important questions to be sure, but as COVID-19 has become more and more a part of our lives these past few weeks, I have heard in the news headlines, I have heard people in my family and friends in this congregation and wider community wonder where God is in the middle of all. I have heard people asked earnestly what God is doing in all of this. Is God punishing us through this pandemic for our sins, the sins of our nation, the sins of our world? Or instead, is God, in spite of our sins and our own brokenness, is God there with us, healing us and leading us outward into a promised land? So I want to um, invite you this morning not to imagine yourselves as little Ethels, but to imagine God as a little Ethel. And then to reflect together with me on these questions. In the midst of COVID-19, is God punishing us for our sins or mending our brokenness? In the midst of COVID-19, is God punishing us or is God mending us? I hope that many of you know me enough to know that I do not make a habit in my sermons of telling you what to think or what to believe. But this morning, I'm going to risk doing both of those things by sharing with you a belief, a passionate, ardent belief that is at the core and of my life and faith. And it's this, my belief in the goodness of God. My belief in the goodness of God, which means that God never, ever, 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 ever harms us in order to teach us or to save us. And as I imagine God in this painting, Family Cares, as little Ethel, the only thing I can see is a God who's threading that needle in order to mend us and never, ever, ever contributing to our brokenness. As evidence of my belief in the goodness of God who never, ever harms us in order to teach us, now give us Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14, in this image of the Valley of Dry Bones. <clears throat> to set it up, let me just say this briefly, that Ezekiel is one of the three major prophets of Israel, alongside Jeremiah and Isaiah. And Ezekiel lives and writes in a very difficult time in the life of Israel. In the very early 6th century, when Babylon had come in, taken over the region, and was threatening to destroy Jerusalem and all of the Jewish people, and had begun a series of exiles, moving the best and brightest, uh, the most educated, the wealthiest, out of Jerusalem and into the city of Babylon. Ezekiel was among the first groups to be exiled, and so there he is in a foreign city, surrounded by these strange buildings, these incredible winged bulls, and just wondering, what God was doing in all of it. How could God allow the people to be conquered and exiled? They were the chosen people. How could God have allowed this to happen? There's a theological crisis. There's a cultural crisis. There's an economic crisis. Things are really, really bad for Ezekiel and his people. 
And so it is in that context that the valley of dry bones comes to us. The Lord came upon me, Ezekiel said, and then took me down and showed me an image of a valley of dry bones, which is an image of the death and destruction of the Jewish people. And then God asked me a question, will these bones live? Ezekiel had no answer. Like us today, we wonder if the bones will live. And then God answers God's own question and says, I will bring sinew on these bones and I will cause them to have flesh and I will breathe life into them. And yes, be certain for true, these bones will live. Sometimes scripture seems so long ago and far away, so dusty and irrelevant. But sometimes, like this passage this morning, we have a, a passage that is totally relevant and fresh and just totally speaks to our current situation. And so here we are in a valley of dry bones all our own. Did you hear there is a stay-at-home order issued by our governor? Parents, did you hear that kids won't be going back to school now until at least September? There is a strain on our medical system, concern for our medical staff and their families, concern for everybody as we experience isolation, as some of us are running out of resources, if all of us are running out of patients. And many of us, I know, have that ancient question of God's right on our very own tongues as we wonder, will these bones live? And the answer from someone who's not in the business of getting answers, the answer I have no doubt is that yes, 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 these bones will live. The answer from Ezekiel 37 and every other book of Scripture from Genesis through the Gospels to Revelation, the answer is yes, 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 these bones will live. And that is true not because I say it's true and not because you want to believe that's true, but the answer is yes because that's just who God is and who God has been and what God has done from the first second of creation up until this very day. That yes, 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 these bones will live. You will live. And our job as God's beloved children is to believe that truth and to live with hope like we believe that, and with the hope that we have then to go out there and tell everyone we've ever met the truth that, yes, these bones will live. And that is the great, good gospel news for this day and every day. Thank God these bones will live. Believe it, hope in it, and tell it to those around you. Amen. From the buried grain, Queen that in dark earth many days has lain, love lives again that with the dead has been. Love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. In the grave they laid him, love whom hate had slain. 
thinking that never he would wake again. Laid in the earth like grain that sleeps unseen. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. When our hearts are wintry, grieving or in pain, thy touch can call us back to life again. Fields of our hearts that dead and bare have been, Love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. Dear ones, I'll just say I miss you all so very much. I have a, a, a deep love uh, for you, this whole congregation, and just... Um, invite you, as I said at the beginning, just to continue to reach out and to pray for one another. Reach out to Susan and I and, and Hadley as you have need, and uh, we will care for one another as best we can with hope that uh, the way things are now won't be this way forever, and that God is with us all along the way. <clears throat> Our benediction this morning is to is from uh, came across my desk from um, our friends Alyssa and Nick who uh, live in the area but are back at home in Massachusetts with their family for now. And um, this is written by Laura Kelly Finucci. And so here are these words. When this is over, may we never take for granted a handshake with a stranger, full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, Friday night out, the taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be, we were called to be, we hope to be, and may we stay that way better for each other because of the worst. Dear ones, go in peace. And before you go in peace, let us sing together from your homes, may the blessings of God. And Cameron will lead us in that. May the blessings of God shine upon you. May God's peace abide in you. May God's presence illuminate your heart. Now and forevermore. Jane will lead us in our postlude, and after that, um, I invite you, uh, as you need, to connect with um, Hadley in our uh, Sunday school.